and gentlemen, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, welcome everybody. If you would please uh, turn off all your electronic devices. Let's make sure that we've done the same thing. And if you would please stand and join me in the invocation and the pledge. Well, it's on. Brian, they're saying they can't hear me. Let's pray. Lord, we ask you to bless our meeting tonight. Open our minds that we may use good reason, our ears that we may truly listen to the views of others, and our hearts that we may always have compassion for those in need. We ask your blessings on the families of those servicemen and women who gave their lives in the struggle for freedom. May your spirit of peace and comfort be with them always. Help us that we may never take for granted the freedoms purchased at so high a price. We ask these things together as one community united in pursuit of common goals. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Is the microphone working now? Is that better? Okay. Thank you, Brian. So, for our first item of business is the proclamation for Temple Terrace Arbor Day. If City Arborist Joe Ferris would please approach the podium. Welcome, to Mr. Ferris. Good evening. Let me make sure I have the right one. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Edu Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees, this holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious, precious topsoil by wind and water, lower heat and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business area, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now therefore I, Andy Ross, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Temple Terrace, Florida, do hereby set aside June 5th, 2021 as Temple Terrace Arbor Day. Would you like to say a few words? Um, yes, thank you. Um, for this year's Arbor Day, I'll be giving away trees uh, this Saturday at Woodmont Park. Um, took orders uh, for trees from residents have about 101 of them that will be going out um, For anyone that may have missed it. Um, just contact me. I'll definitely order some more and we'll get out some more trees Very um, good. I also have uh, Jane here from the Temple Terrace um, Garden Club um, I'll let you talk last year uh, well, last year for Arbor Day we um, Worked together with the spring market and Arbor Day and it was really successful Plan to do that in the future, and she applied for an award, so I asked her to to talk about that award. Great. Is it better to talk about it now, or is because we have another proclamation coming up regarding the garden club? Never. Well, I don't know what you're going to say, so it's I don't know where. Tied in with the Arbor Day, the award but was now yeah. better. Okay. Well, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jane Adamson. Uh, so last spring market was a week before everything shut down. So we did have our spring market and celebrated Arbor Day, giving away trees. Uh, providing educational content and having a speaker, Joe Gross, about the history of Arbor Day. So I applied to the uh, Florida Federation of Garden Clubs Award and we won uh, Arbor Day celebration for what we did. And we not only won for Florida, we won for the Deep South, which includes Louisiana, Tennessee, Georgia, um, Alabama, and maybe one other state. First, first place. So we're so happy to be able to have done this in partnership with the city. Well, Thank great. you. Fantastic. Very good. <clears throat> oh, Jane, stay up here. You ladies come up to the first. Why? Come on, 
Next item on the agenda is a proclamation concerning um, 2021 National Garden Week. If uh, Garden Club President Sharon Gaskin would like to come to the podium. You guys, hello, how are you? I'm Sharon Gaskin and I'm happy to be here tonight. Good, well, look, I'll tell you what, why don't I read the proclamation okay. first and then you can, we'll open it up and you ladies can, can uh, share with, good. So whereas gardeners have a passion for nurturing the beauty and resources of the earth through the planting of seeds, the care of all plants, and the riches of their efforts, and whereas gardeners seek to add beauty, splendor, fragrance, and nutrition to our lives through the growing of herbs, vegetables, foliage, and flowers, and whereas gardeners advocate the importance of all creatures, large and small, that share our world and their role in a balanced and productive ecology, and whereas gardening furnishes a challenging and productive activity for our citizens, for those just learning, as well as those having years of experience. And whereas gardening enables members of the Temple Terrace Garden Club to make a difference in the community where they reside and work. Now, therefore, I, Andrew Ross, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Temple Terrace, Florida, do hereby proclaim June 6 through 12, 2021 as National Garden Week. So thank you, ladies. Thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you for, for providing that to us. I appreciate it. I want you to notice that every one of you at your seats have this little commemorative fan from our 75th anniversary party. Uh, as you may know, our garden club is the oldest existing club in Temple Terrace. We were founded 75 years ago. This is our 75th anniversary year. We'll be celebrating all year long, and we want to remind you of that. Um, and the reason this club was formed by a group of little ladies 75 years ago was to make Temple Terrace more beautiful. Well, you've done a great job with it, I'll say. So. We're working on it. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is a presentation by ABM of the Energy Audit and Energy Savings Status Update. Uh, Mr. Wesley Patterson, the General Manager of ABM, I think is going to present. Welcome, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Mayor, City Council. <clears throat> Some of you might remember Dan Klein um, at the beginning of this program. Um, I had the, the honor of taking his position when he retired um, about December 2020. So I've been doing this role a little bit. Um, so the program predates me a little bit, but not, not most of you, some of you at least. <clears throat> um, Right. Oh, there we go. 
All right, so <clears throat> these pictures are kind of a, a mm. reminder of the condition some of the equipment was in when the program started and the reason uh, that you guys decided to go with the program with ABM to straighten out some of the air conditioning system that existed um, back in 2016. Um, and in March 2016, uh, the City Council authorized the program with ABM to address these uh, maintenance needs. And you can see uh, different buildings had different facility improvement measures that we did. Some of them were windows. Uh, there were some major HVAC replacement programs. Um, there was a lot of different things. There was uh, LED lighting in almost all of the buildings. Uh, but, but each one, we touched each building and we gave you uh, some energy savings calculations that uh, were guaranteed. And if those buildings, after the performance improvement measures were done, if, we did, if the buildings weren't actually seeing those energy savings, they were guaranteed and that money would actually be funded by ABM for the difference. <clears throat> these uh, these uh, upgrades were completed in around December 2019 and that's when the audits and the energy calculations started to come into place. Um, and here are some of those numbers. As you can see, kind of on the left-hand side, uh, the energy guarantee uh, is done. Is is there's an, actually an annual audit uh, that's required by the contract. The savings is guaranteed. Uh, this is for the first four years. There's a total of uh, four hundred nine thousand dollars, which was what was guaranteed under the contract. The savings so far in year four is actually four hundred and sixty thousand eight twenty four, with still a, a year left in the contract. So far, the program has exceeded the, uh, the guaranteed energy savings by $51,000. That's additional money that was guaranteed, then was guaranteed back to the city. <clears throat> uh, and, and shown in a different, uh, in different graph, a different way of showing it. The blue is what, you would, what, we, what was guaranteed under the contract, we were contracted to save, and then the green was what actually was produced and calculated by the savings uh, for an additional $51,251. So that, that's kind of where we are to date with, uh, with the energy program. Uh, we got one more year, it actually ends, the contract ends um, in uh, October 1st of this year. Uh, there's another five years where we actually can calculate, you're paying us to calculate the energy savings, give, give that back to you. But we've got some recommendations going forward. Um, one, of the, one of the things that we, uh, we were thinking going forward is you can cancel, if you're, if you're comfortable with the way the energy uh, calculations are going, you don't need to pay us about, you guys are paying us about $15,000 a year uh, to maintain the calculations and, and, uh, and, and measure the buildings to see how the guarantee is going. Um, you can, if you're comfortable with it, we recommend that you guys stop that program, uh, keep that money and refund it, reinvest it back into the buildings. Um, a couple of other things, uh, it's time, so uh, for instance, this building, we never touched the HVAC equipment in this building. We maintain it, but we never replaced it. There are a couple of buildings where um, we're five years older and the, this, this equipment needs to be replaced. We're maintaining it. We're, it's, the equipment, especially on this building, is really on its last leg. We're, we're having more maintenance calls, uh, more equipment's down, a lot of compressor failures, um, and that's going to start affecting you guys here you know, on October 1st when, this con when the contract's up. Um, the interesting thing is today you can use grant money, federal grant money, COVID funds, whatever you want to call it, uh, to replace that, you don't have to use your general funds. <coughs> so we're, we're recommended that you, you replace this equipment. We've, we've offered some budget dollars of what that's gonna look like. But the cool thing too about it is when you replace this equipment, you can also get energy, um, you can also get um, clean air enhancements to this new equipment that can help for you know, future viruses and things like that, really filter the air and, uh, and clean, up, clean up the air, um, which is what, what's required to get the grant, the funding from, from the federal government. Um, <clears throat> uh, we also recommend the city renew its maintenance program. That way you can ensure that the energy savings we've seen throughout continues uh, and you maintain this newer equipment on the other, some of the other buildings. Uh, here's here's a, a page, Schedule 3, out of the Energy Services contract. This schedule gives the city an opportunity um, to f use our five-year-old pricing uh, for the additional upgrades up until October. Um, which is when the contract ends. So these are some of the buildings. You see the first three, City Hall, Rec Center, and Lightfoot. We're recommending you uh, replace that antiquated equipment. So that wasn't part of the original contract. The city opted not to go in that direction for those because the equipment was a little bit newer. It's not any longer. 
Uh, so we've got some budget numbers out there for you guys to start planning or uh, start getting funding for. And then, of course, the other column is uh, the, the uh, clean air initiatives to, uh, to clean up. You know, a lot of extra filters. There's uh, UV lighting, things like that that goes into the air conditioning equipment that, uh, that will also not only clean up the facilities, but also it will allow you to get that federal funding for, those, for that equipment replacement. And uh, do you have any questions? Which funding stream are you referring to? CARES Act or CARES Rescue Act Plan? CARES Act. CARES Act money. Yeah. <clears throat> Council member questions? Good to know. Oh, just a comment. Uh, Council member Abel. So I just wanted to point out to everyone watching and, and say how this is a really nice illustration of how environmentally sound decisions are also can also be economically sound decisions. So these savings and um, the, the energy savings along with the, the reduced environmental impact are, are really impressive. So thank you for sharing that information thank with you. us. Mr. Stevenson, what's next steps for us? Um, Mr. Mayor, this is, this is a yearly requirement under the contract that they come in and show our energy savings to date. Um, what I would like to do is to uh, maybe regroup with ABM and talk about using some CARES Act money to move forward with some of the AC replacements that we um, are in dire need of and as well as improving the air quality for our employees. Um, City Hall is the biggest um, problem that we've got. I mean, this equipment is is never been changed out since I've been here and that's going on 18 years. The equipment doesn't last that long. So rather than uh, continue with, um, and I love these guys to death, these guys have done a great job for the city, but rather than continue paying them for a performance measurement that they can't do any better than what they've been doing, you can see the numbers have stayed pretty constant the last couple of years. I'd rather take and put the uh, uh, those funds back into the program so that we can get this equipment um, changed out, repaired, and improved. Um, that um, I need to have more conversation with them about timing, um, but I have confirmed that uh, the improvements in the air quality in City Hall and our other buildings will qualify uh, for use of CARES Act money. So I would like to um, have a little bit of time to come back to Council with a program to get, uh, get that done. So let me ask another question. This may be apples and oranges. I don't, I don't know. Um, I talked to other <coughs> mayors in some other cities, um, some larger than us, but not all. And some are having some success with solar and offsetting some of their energy consumption by placing solar on top of their city buildings. I don't know if you guys are even in the solar business. Yes, we are. Um, I, and, and I have, other than conversations with other mayors, I don't know what the particulars are of that. And so I, there's more that I don't know about that than there is that I do. Mm -hmm. But I do know that that's kind of a common trend I'm seeing in Florida with other mayors as they're, as they're looking at doing that to offset some of the energy um, consumption for rec center, city hall, that kind of stuff. Yeah, rec center specifically. So I, I don't want to get ahead of you. That's kind of apple and oranges, but I, that's, that's yeah. a great concept. Um, I, I will let you know, eight or 10 years ago, I actually um, started talking to solar people to put solar panels on top of the roof. It's an excellent platform for solar. Um, and I, it was very cost prohibitive back then, um, but obviously a lot of work's been done on solar panels since then. Um, that's certainly one of those things that we can pursue here in the near future. So. Well, is the council okay with us asking Mr. Stevenson to include that in his conversation? Just kind of ex some preliminary exploration. Is that yes. okay with everybody? Yeah. Yes, and uh, also there's maybe uh, seek out grants where they're available because I know there some exists I've looked into. Very good. Any other questions? So if it if it's okay with council, I'd like to put uh, a program together, bring bring back a an idea so that uh, we can move forward with ABM. And at the same time, now that we've got this guarantee with equipment that uh, has five-year pricing on it, uh, it would be a good time to take advantage of that as well. So 
um, and we're under contract with them and we can buy this equipment under that contract. So I think it's a good deal um, and I'd like to kind of move forward with that so that we can get this done. Okay. Well, so. Patterson, thank you to you and your team for coming tonight. It was well timed. So when the city manager brings these things forward, we have some context and it's a good, good step-by-step -step flow. So thank you for coming tonight. Yes, and, Mayor. And, uh, thank, you, thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Next item is approval of the May 18th City Council meeting minutes. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes? Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Is there discussion or corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 The minutes are approved. Next item is persons wishing to be heard on items not listed on the agenda or items on the consent agenda. Um, I do have a couple of requests to speak. A three-minute time limit is imposed on all comments from the public. We do ask that speakers come to the podium and state their name and city of residence. We like to assure all those in attendance and watching on remotely that during public comment, city manager and directors in attendance do take these items seriously. Um, we do make note of them and, and follow up on them. So the first one I have is from Mrs. Annette Rennie. <clears throat> Welcome, Mrs. Rennie. Annette Rennie, 9512 Woodland Ridge Drive. I'm here tonight to ask the City Council and the Mayor, as well as Chief Albano, to please do something about the speeding through our comu community. It has gotten unbelievable. 56th Street is like Fowler Avenue, as well as Bullard and Temple Terrace Highway. And it's not just the outskirts, it's the actual interior and the smaller streets, Druid Hills, River Hills, my subdivision, which is River Run. I've never seen anything like it. People are out walking and it's a two-lane highway and they'll pass each other and cut in front of each other. And I'd like to see us go back to neighborhood patrols where the police officers are actually in the neighborhoods patrolling when they have the opportunity. Now, I realize if there's an accident, that's a different story. but. We really need to have a presence. Also, I've addressed this with the city manager a couple times. The wall on Temple Terrace Highway, which belongs to the city, is tipping over. It is obstructing the view as you come out of 78th Street, and the traffic is going east to west so that you cannot see going out. Something needs to be done before there's a fatality. We've had accidents, but there will be a fatality sooner or later. Um, and I do wish you would address the speeding and neighborhood patrols. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Rennie. <clears throat> Next uh, speaker is Ms. Jan Tumbleson. Welcome, Mrs. Tumbleson. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Mayor, Council. Okay, I want to talk about traffic in and around Temple Terrace. Based on facts from the MPO staff, Hillsborough County Planning, Condition, Planning Commission and Florida Department of Transportation. All the data that I have received from FDOT and Hillsborough County, all the streets are level D, like dog. F is failing. For Hillsborough County Capital Improvement Plan approved by the BOCC, there are no plans to improve any roadway in the area of Temple Terrace. This is a five-year plan. Also, Florida Department of Transportation has no plans to improve Fowler, 56, Bush, or Fletcher Avenue. Also, this is their five-year plan. Okay, Temple Terrace is, ex is surrounded by roadways that are <clears throat> not under our control. Temple Terrace Highway is a minor arterial highway, not a collector, as was stated in the traffic report presented for the subdivision that went to, uh, to y'all for approval. Level D, F is failing between 56th Street and Highway 301. The length of the roadway is less than three miles. Temple Terrace Police has record of accident, traffic accidents for over a year is 100 and 
five accidents. The MPO states that between Harney to Fowler Avenue by 301 is also level D. I think that Hills, I think we should apply pressure not only on our Hillsborough County, our commissioners, but also we should ask for our representatives from the state to apply pressure to get something done with Hillsborough County and FDOT for Temple <laughs> Terrace. Thank you. Are there other members of the public who wish to address the council on items not on the agenda? I would like to tell the public present and watching that some of that information, Mrs. Tumbleson, regarding the plans is inaccurate that you just presented. And I'll give an update. I don't want to derail the meeting, but I will give an update on some things under new business because some of what you said is not correct. Maybe there's some things that I can share. Well, we got a good on our agenda now, but I will, under new business, I'll bring it up if you want to stick around. You're welcome. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is a resolution approving SPR 20-08, the final site plan for the River Park subdivision. Planner Celeste Lau will explain. Welcome, Mrs. Lau. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. <laughs> the item I am presenting tonight is SPR 20-08, which is a final site plan application for the River Park subdivision. The property is located at the northwest corner of the Temple Terrace Highway and North 78th Street intersection. It has addresses of 7032 and 7746 Temple Terrace Highway. The current uses for the property are the Florida College Academy and the Terrace Hill Golf Course. The applicant is proposing a 141 unit subdivision. The size of the property is 35.42 acres. A little background on the property. Um, the property has had both a comprehensive plan amendment as well as rezoning done. The comprehensive plan amendment amended the future land use designations from public, semi-public, and commercial to single family residential or R4. Uh, that was approved by council on December 15th, 2020. The rezoning amended the uh, zoning designations from single family residential or R9, commercial general, and educational institutional to plan development. That was approved by council on April 20th, 2021. Here is the site plan for the subdivision with the yellow outlining the subdivision's boundary. The blue shows the, uh, where the 141 units will be. The green showing the stormwater and retention pond areas and the purple showing the um, open space slash potential um, clubhouse or, or pool or recreation area. The subdivision is proposed to have two access points with the main access on Temple Terrace Highway and the secondary access on North 78th Street. During the rezoning process, um, a concern um, was brought up about the buffering between the subdivision and the Riverfront Preserve Park, which is located directly north of the subdivision. The applicant is proposing a six foot high Simtech fence shown in the red here um, to provide buffering between the subdivision and the park. Here is a photo of what the uh, Simtech fence looks like. And again, the Simtech fence is a synthetic PVC fence that is uh, more durable and sturdier than a normal PVC fence. Another concern that was brought up during the rezoning process was the um, access point on Temple Terrace Highway. Um, currently, there's a full median right now, which would potentially allow for um, left in, left out, and right in and right out to the proposed subdivision. Due to that safety concern, um, the applicant is proposing a bi-directional median that would allow for a left in, right in, right out, but it would not allow for anyone leaving the subdivision to make a left turn onto Temple Terrace Highway. With this application, there were three conditions of approval. Uh, the first being that on-street parking shall be prohibited. Uh, this will be recorded in the HOA declaration and will be uh, noticed throughout the subdivision. Uh, the second condition is that property owners shall not 
install a gate where their fence border city property or right of way. And the third being um, the development is to occur in conformance with the approved rezoning application RZP 20-02 um, ordinance 1504. The Development Review Committee has reviewed and does not have any outstanding objections to the proposed site plan. City staff recommends that council approve the resolution for SPR 20-08. That concludes staff presentation. The applicant is present um, and both staff and the applicant are here to answer any questions you may have. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Lau. Would the applicant like to make any comments? Mr. Couch, is it? Good. I thought so. Welcome, need sir. Need to be sworn for this, Mayor. Uh, no, sir. Uh, Jeremy Couch, Tampa Civil One Seven Nine Three Seven Hunting Bow Lutes Three Three Five Five Eight. <clears throat> um, just want to thank the commission and the staff. Um, our final site plans that we've submitted and were reviewed um, by your departments uh, do exactly what we said we would do in the rezoning, and uh, we look forward to starting work. Thank you. Couch. Any other comments from the applicant's representatives? No? Are there members of the public who wish to comment on this item? Any members of the public? Council member questions for staff or the applicant? Mr. Schistler. Yes. Um, what's the estimated completion schedule? Councilman uh, Schistler, once we start, it'll take us about nine months to build the infrastructure. So after this, there will be real estate transactions and then we'll mobilize. Okay. We still have to work out a few things with Mr. Amir to pull permits and pair impact fees and things like that. Okay. Just curious. Thank you. Council yeah. members, other questions? Yeah, I didn't hear the, it takes nine, it'll be nine months before what? I'm sorry. Nine months for infrastructure development. Okay. okay. Thank That's. Just clarify for everybody. That's just yeah. streets and storm drains and yeah. sewers and water. Grading and underground. Okay. And then you start Those, to build houses. Then we go vertical, yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, okay. And how long do you think it'll take you to build the houses? Um, it it's really depends on absorption, but I think they're projecting about two years for this community. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Other questions, council members? If not, is there a motion to approve SPR 20-8? I move to approve resolution approving SPR 20-8, final site plan for the River Park subdivision. Second. We have a motion, and then I believe Council Member A will beat you to the second. Okay. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mr. Sisler. Yes. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, support the mo I, I, I support the project, but I still feel that there's a significant traffic issue. I really, really hope that as we go forward with this, that we just don't assume that everything's done with the traffic. Let's keep an open mind, and particularly even even as far as the city goes, with with the issue of the blind corner. I don't care anybody says it's a blind corner. I think we have a plan. I just hope that we get it executed and you know quickly um, before we do have a real bad problem there. I mean, 141 houses, great project. It's going to be nice. I know there's a lot of support for it, but there's a lot of people who live to the to the east that are very, very concerned about what's going to happen uh, with traffic in that area. And I too am concerned about it. So, <clears throat> not going to not going to do anything to try to stop. I think it's a great pro project, and I'm, I'm all in favor of it. But let's let's remember that there, there's there there could be a problem here, and let's see see if we can all work together to make sure that it, it isn't. A problem that we address it as we go through, and that the city fixes what they uh, said that they can do with that with that corner. That's all I have. Thank you. Is there any other discussion of the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify with aye. 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 Opposed? No nays. The resolution is approved. Thank you, everybody. Next item on the agenda is the first public hearing and first reading of Ordinance 1507, adopting voluntary annexation of folio numbers. 038181 0000 
dash zero 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 zero. I will open the public hearing. I'm just reading what it says. <laughs> City Clerk, would you please swear in all the plan to testify? Good. Uh, City Attorney, would you please pull the Council for Ex Parte Communication? I've had none. I've had none. I've had none. I've had none. I have had none. Very good. Mr. Corpus, take us away. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. I'm, I've had plenty of communication. Uh, what you're looking at is a uh, voluntary annexation for the four folio numbers that the mayor read off. Um, it's for property owned by Citrus Assets, and the applicant is Cullinan uh, Enterprises, LLC. Uh, it's a property, it's actually the four uh, folios are south of Temple Terrace Highway, west of Davis Road, and north of Harney Road. It's actually just northwest uh, across Harney from the Amazon property. Uh, it's, uh, again, the request is to annex four parcels <coughs> into the city of Temple Terrace from Hillsboro, and it's approximately 52.2 uh, acres of land. The existing zoning uh, is Hillsborough County PD 07-1784. The proposed zoning is planned development. They have submitted an application for that, which uh, will be before the council in the coming month or so. Uh, the Development Review Committee has reviewed this request and determined that the proposed annexation would not negatively impact uh, the city's level of service or personnel. The Hillsborough County uh, City County Planning Commission has also reviewed the request and has no objection to the annexation and has no objection to the annexation, has no objection and feels it is consistent uh, with the goals and objectives of our comprehensive plan. Also, the Planning Commission will be hearing the comp plan amendment uh, next, uh, I'm sorry, June 15th. Uh, and they're looking to go from Hillsboro CMU 12 to Temple Terrace CMU 12. Uh, and then Mark Hudson will be coming before the council, I believe, the first meeting in July. Um, and again, like I said, they've got the re uh, rezoning application already submitted for this request. Uh, staff recommends that the council approve the first reading of the ordinance, uh, 1506, for the annexation of the folio numbers. There will be a second reading in two weeks, which will essentially be the same presentation. The applicants are here if you have any questions for them, and I'm here if you have any questions now for me. Good. Thank you, Mr. Carpus. Does the applicant wish to make any comments? Welcome, ma'am. Welcome, Cami Corbett uh, with Hill Ward Henderson 10, uh, 100 East, 101 East Kennedy Boulevard, Suite 3700. Um, I am here representing the applicant, Cullinan. Uh, they are a contract purchaser of a portion of the property. Gus mentioned that it's 53.2 acres that are being annexed in, but only 19, approximately 20 acres are coming in for the actual rezoning at the, this time. The entire property is coming into the city of Temple Terrace. The balance will be uh, owned by Citrus Assets, which is the current owner of the property. They're selling the northernmost 20 acres. And so the comprehensive plan and the annexation will apply to all 53 acres and the zoning will apply only to the 20 acres. And that's simply because the owner of the remaining balance does not know what they want to do with that property at this time. So it's really not appropriate for a zoning of that parcel. It will remain, um, it just won't have a zoning designation. It'll have a CMU 12 future land use category and they would have to come in to rec reconcile their zoning on whatever use that they want to propose. They can't, they won't be able to utilize their Hillsborough County zoning once they're annexed in and have the City of Temple Terrace comprehensive plan. So you'll get to see that when that comes forward. Um, the property is currently uh, taxed as commercial property because it is zoned for commercial uses, a big box. Uh, but when the, and then that means that the Citrus Assets, 
asset property will remain commercially uh, taxed, but the Cullinan property will also be commercially taxed, but we anticipate that that will significantly increase the taxable value of that northern 20 most acres. And I'd like to have Mr. Uh, uh, I have to have my, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Moment, Mike Owens. I'm sorry. I'm, what did you call you, Mike Oates? I'm very much apologize, Mike. We talk all the time. I want to have Mike Owens from Cullinan come up and address you to um, share with you the information about the property taxes on the anticipated use. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Corbett. I've been called worse. Welcome, Mr. Owens. I'm Mike Owens, and I'm with Cullinan Properties. Uh, we're the owner of Cullinan Enterprises. Uh, we want to assure you that we'll be excellent corporate citizens. We are in all the communities where we develop. And wanted to also make it very clear that uh, the property, although it's for a tax exempt user, the United States government will not be tax exempt. There will be full property taxes paid on the property. So with, with that, welcome questions, but we just want to be very clear about that. We, an, we anticipate, based on other comparable properties, that the annual tax bill upon stabilization will be in the four hundred to four hundred fifty thousand dollar a year range. Thank you, Mr. Owens. Are there members of the public who wish to comment on this item? Any members of the public? Council member, are there questions for staff or Ms. Corbett or Mr. Owens? No, I okay, I see a lot of hands. Vice Mayor, you have the chance. Oh, thank you. So I'm looking at the numbers. The little pieces. So the piece that is going to be for, for the first one is the one that actually touches Temple Terrace Highway. Yeah, it's going to be on the northern portion. Okay. So. Uh, and that's going to be shown when they submit their rezoning. They're going to have that the piece that's going to be out is going to be. I think it touches three of the folios. Correct. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, so the that map was not provided because that's all this entire piece is being brought in. And then when the rezoning would show the exact parcel that's going to be rezoned, okay. the entire part isn't being rezoned. And that wasn't part of this application. They're just annexing the four folios right oh, now, four. the entire thing. And they're doing the same with the comp plan amendment. They're doing the amendment for the whole parcel. Now, when the rezoning application comes to you, you'll see the exact dimensions of what they're going to be rezoning. Okay. Council Member Abel. When I was looking through these um, attachments to this, the agenda item, I was wondering if we would be providing water and sewer for this property, and the ordinance says yes, and it will be paid for setting that up by the petitioner. But on the application, it says that a utility agreement is not applicable. And I was wondering, why isn't there a utility agreement? And uh, I don't know why there wouldn't be one. Yeah, I, I, I can address that. Okay. Mr. Stevenson. You want it? <laughs> we typically, we don't require a utility agreement unless a parcel is not within the city limits, but we provide water and sewer to that parcel. Um, in this case, with it coming into Temple Terrace, there is no need for a utility agreement. But we will be providing the water and sewer for the new development there? Correct. Correct. Okay. And the infrastructure for that will be um, handled by the petitioner? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Other questions, council members? Seeing no further questions, I will close the public hearing and ask the clerk to read the title of the ordinance. An ordinance of the City of Temple Terrace, Florida, providing for the voluntary annexation of four parcels of certain real property, totaling 53.2 plus minus acres, lying within the unincorporated area of Hillsborough County and located south of Temple Terrace Highway, west of Davis Road and north of Harney Road legally described in Exhibit A attached hereto and made a part hereof. Redefined in the corporate boundaries of the city to include the annexed area, providing severability and effective date and repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict to it. Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 1506 on first reading? First, so moved for the first reading. Second. Motion and a second. Is there discussion on the motion? Comments, discussion on the motion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 Opposed? No nays. The uh, ordinance is passed on first reading. It will appear for a second public reading 
on Tuesday, June 15th, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Carpus. Next item on the agenda is the first public hearing and first reading of Ordinance 1508, amending Chapter 22 of the Code, Solid Waste Collection and Disposal. I'll open the public hearing. Public, work directors, public Works Director of Operations, Ray LeBlanc, will explain. Good, Good evening, sir. Mr. LeBlanc. In January of this past year, the city made the long overdue transition to semi-automated system to collect residential trash. The city's fleet of sanitation vehicles was retrofitted with automatic tippers that pick up standard 95 or 65 gallon sanitation carts uh, to replace the previous practice of sanitation crews manually doing this work. With the implementation of the new semi-automated system, the collection practices for residential solid waste has changed. In order to reflect the new semi-automated system, it is now necessary to revise Article 6 of our Code of Ordinances, which addresses solid waste collection and disposal. In performing a review of Article 6 to update it to reflect current collection practices, it also became apparent that other sections of this article were incorrect and or outdated. It was determined that the last time a thorough review of, uh, revision of this article had been performed was through Ordinance 1091, adopted June 3, 2003. With this in mind, the best course of action to take was to review and revise the entire article. City staff has prepared a draft ordinance that reflects the revisions and updates to Article 6 of the City's Code of Ordinance relative to collection and disposal of solid waste in the City of Temple Terrace. If approved on the first reading, a public hearing and second reading of the ordinance will be held at the June 15th, 2021 City Council meeting. Thank you, Mr. LeBlanc. Are there members of the public who wish to comment on this item? If not, Council Member, questions for Mr. LeBlanc? Pretty clear. I have one actually. Uh, Council Member Abel. So um, I know one of the changes um, I talked about with um, Mr. Stevenson today was that when work is being performed for commercial purposes and requiring permitting, the, the annual pickup won't be for those uh, purposes. It will just be for um, residents needing a pickup. Um, do I, did I understand that correctly? So I was wondering how that will be communicated because I know many contractors tell residents that they can just leave it out by the street and the city will pick it up for free. And I know residents believe that, you know, they can call for a pickup once a year. They might not know that now there's a new stipulation, not stipulation, that's the wrong way to put it. Now it will be enforced that it's only for residential pickup and not just for, um, for commercial and permitted um, work done by professionals. I was wondering how that will be communicated if that needed to be communicated. You're referring to trees, tree trimmings and stuff like that? Yes, sir. And, yeah. and also contracted work that required a permit. Yeah, well, what we ran into uh, for a long time was uh, people would hire a contractor and have a 90-year-old oak tree, 60-year-old oak tree, and they cut it up and put it to curb. Uh, we, we can't afford that. It's, it's just not... But, you know, possible. So there has been communication on the website um, through when people call in also that the, the, the tree cutting part of the annual pickup is for work that the resident can do. If they're going to have a contractor come in to excavate a tree or take down a large tree, and, and some of these trees uh, are three, four thousand dollars to get rid of the tree itself. Forget about the, the truck time. Um, we, we don't want to allow that to, to have that happen. Um, so it's communicated in a bunch of different ways. Um, um, so if, if you have, you know, a tree that you can handle yourself, but not for land clear. We have, we run into land clearing objects. Uh, Pleasant Terrace has some deep lots and people would, you know, clear a tree line and it's a $4,500 bill. So we communicate it any way we can. And if anybody's listening tonight, hopefully they'll, They'll get it. That's what I was hoping that they would get the message for. Because yeah. we don't want residents to be in a bind in those situations. I want them to know that. Yeah, it was problematic for a while, but we've done a lot of communication. And, you know, most of our customers are long term, which actually helps. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're free to tell anybody, too. That'll help us. Will do. Thank you so much. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mr. Sisler. Yeah, thank, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. In, in the exhibit, uh, which gives better definition, I did find what I think is one conflicting, or two, two comments conflicted each other, and maybe just the addition of a, of a word or two may clarify. If, we, if you go to the first section under section 22-336 under definitions, the first red-lined area, which, which identifies and defines the special annual uh, trash, the special trash annual pickup, the last line, excluded items for pickup include tree removal debris, hazardous materials, and construction and de uh, demo materials. If we could possibly add in the word commercially generated or, or something to indicate that it, can, it comes from something other than I ripped down the, the, my fence in the backyard or, or I cut down a bunch of bushes across the back of my yard and I drug them out to the front. They're not going to have 12-inch diameter logs, but there's going to be an incredible amount of debris out there, which is what I would call for, 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 the, for the pickup. That conflicts with uh, the definition or, or, or it's, it's, it's clarified better under, and I can't find it now, uh, Five, that's it, 22-345, subparagraph uh, 5, where it talks about a special annual pickup can be not be used to supplement work performed for commercial purposes. If we could just get the same inference into that special definition, then I think we've got a, a continuous or, or a document that will spell out and everybody should know that if it's anything dealing with a commercial, uh, the results of a commercial effort, then you don't get your special pickup. You can, you, you, you'll have to pay for it to be, to be done. Right. Does right. that, that, that's my only no, that's issue true. with the whole thing. Otherwise it's, I think I it's, it's long overdue. Pardon me? I got it. I see okay. That. If we could just put commercial in that first definition, I think that would clarify and eliminate any of that kind of, in my mind, any of those issues. That was my concern with the way this is worded. I, I completely understand and agree and approve of what you're trying to do. What we're trying to do is you hire a tree contractor. They come in, they trim up your trees, they raise the canopy, they take out some old trees, and you have six truckloads worth of tree trimmings on the side of the road, and then the rest of the, the city taxpayers have to pay thousand dollars to clean up instead of, and you didn't have to pay your tree contractor because you just call for your annual pickup. I get it. The problem I saw in this is that if you read the wording of this, it's mentioned three times. It's mentioned in the definition section, which Mr. Schistler already read, excluded items for pickup include tree removal debris. It doesn't qualify. It just says tree removal debris. The next time tree removal tree debris is mentioned is in section 20. To 341, which isn't changed. It talks about yard waste pickup procedures. This is old language. Right. And it says tree branches to be picked up in yard waste have to be bundled and containerized. They have to be shorter than three feet and less than five inches. The other time it's mentioned, there's only one other time that tree debris is mentioned, and that's what you just read, is in the end where it says not work not, per not for work performed for commercial purposes. If you read, I, I know your intent because we've talked, but if you read what's in the four corners of this document, if I trim trees on my property, that's too much to cut up for yard waste. It's too much. It's, and there's bigger than five inches. So suppose I go out there with my pole saw, which I've done, and I trim my trees or raise the canopy up on my property now, I'm not taking any trees out, but I generate a truckload of tree debris, a whole a coal claw truck full, right? I can't call for my annual pickup anymore, according to this. And I can't put it in yard waste because it's too big. Mm -hmm. What do I do with it? And I can't accumulate it because that's prohibited too. So I can't accumulate it and just burn it, you know, and cook hot dogs over it because that's prohibited too. <laughs> so I, I get the intent, and I fully support the intent. What I'm troubled by is if you read this document, literally the way it's written, there's a big hole mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
where people could get stuck with, and I don't know if there's a better way to do it and say, okay, we're gonna limit you to one, you know, your annual pickup, if it'll fit in the claw truck, great. If not, you have other trips, you gotta pay for them. Well, there was. There that was. didn't work? Well, no, no, there there was uh, where you, had, you needed a permit. You don't need a permit anymore. So our, our rule, if I remember right, right, Charles, was a tree, 12 dB, whatever, needed a permit. So it was written, any tree required a permit, which got to the point where it was, you know, two, three thousand dollars $3,000, did not qualify for an annual pickup. That was an easy fix. That's gone. You don't need a permit. So you cut down a 60-foot oak. I don't need a permit, and you're absolutely right. Well, what, So now it shifts to how do we police that if you decide you want to rent a lumberjack saw and cut down a 60 foot tree and said I did it myself which you know but because I have examples from 15 years ago we tried to do this to put some kind of cap on it like you said a truckload or something with GPS pictures and whatever and we got tarred and feathered trying to do that a long long time ago I don't even think we got to that point but yeah how do we regulate where you know you have three 60 foot oaks why, what, what do you mean they're not part of my pickup? That's what we're trying to encapsulate here because we just simply can't. I know, but there's a hole. Yeah. There's a hole. Well, that's why, this a is, hole. that's why this is a draft. <laughs> well, it's not a draft. We're going to vote, aren't we? No, this is a draft. This is a first reading. Well, I don't consider the first reading of an ordinance a draft, but. Well, it's, it's not a draft. It's a first reading. First reading. Yeah. Sorry. It's a, I mean. But. but Right. Well, I, I, I mean, I haven't had conversations, that's obviously. Right. I, I kind of think that probably all five of us are in agreement with what you're trying to do. It's yeah. just a matter of you got to figure out how to get the, yeah. the so verbiage right. Well, and, and perhaps looking at this, um, if you look at the definition section in the yard lights, it talks about the tree going three firms pound down to the center. So if you're Or, or even excessive if the homeowner should do it themselves. Right. You know, or I don't know yeah. why you define yeah. excessive, this, but. This is, this is for the well, I have a question. Vice Mayor. So I take down two doors. I mean, we're not talking about, I didn't need a permit. I did it myself. What am I, who am I supposed to call? What do I, I I'm obviously trying to make a point here. Construction site construction materials you would think oh well that's two doors but what am i supposed to do with those two doors i i i can't break them up and put them in the can i guess i could but i mean <laughs> well, <laughs> we spend a lot a lot of time and that's part of our job a lot of time uh, probably more than any place i've ever seen in my 45 oh, amazing. years amazing going out guy says i have this i have a little bit yeah. of concrete we go out there and look we're not going to sit there and say it says construction debris and it's a door. We go out there and look and make a decision what's in the best mm -hmm. interest of the city rather than have 2,800 things on the list. If you go out there, you have two doors and half of a wing of a house and, and part of the roof there, well, we'll take your two doors and you got to do what you want with the rest. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's we're trying to compartmentalize it without affecting the service. So, I mean, that's what we do. We actually go out and look at everything with well and maybe that's what this needs to say that well you know, if there are questions yeah we we ran determined into, by the public works department we ran into problems with well we want to make it too so you know it's not just the way i feel that day it's the way every you don't want that mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. the way everybody understands the same thing we ran into a problem a couple of years back and charles did a lot to help us there was tree companies coming in there when we're just oh. spring cleaning we'll do your trees and the city will haul it the city will tell them you want your annual. Tell them you want your annual. Mm -hmm. 
it was a bad time because we weren't clear on things and, and thanks to Charles he cleared a lot of that up with the permit thing but that's now gone mm -hmm. so just for the record I'm checking the calendar I'm not texting anybody or I'm just checking the calendar so our next city first City Council meeting in July is July 6 our next meeting is June 15th Other comments, questions? What are we going to do, council members? What's the normal procedure when we want to change it for the second reading? We don't, we would not vote to approve okay. it certainly on first reading. Right. So we would, we would give instruction as to what changes would need to be made and it would be brought back for the second reading. So it would be brought back for a second and final reading? Yeah. Or? Start I mean, over. And you don't have to approve it on second reading either. I mean, it can, you know, but this means your chance, yes, to, to discuss it and to give out direction. Well, assuming, I think, maybe I'm going too far, but assuming that we wanted to see these changes incorporated in the document, these revisions, what would be the preferred step to approve it, even though we know we don't, we want to see these revisions? Or would it be to send it back and bring it back for first reading at a future date? Yeah, you can do that too, but you would not, I mean, clearly <coughs> you want some changes made, so there would be no reason to approve this mm -hmm. at this first yeah. reading. So we could do it either way. Yes. But we could. Except don't vote yes to approve it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. not one of the ways. That's okay. Right. So, so, so um, if you I think they, yeah, I think, I think we're all trying to do the same, get to the same place. Move to a table? Well, so what would be the, do we need, should we, should we make a motion to table this or should we just let the city just say, come back to us or should we vote it down? What should we do? Okay. Certain. All right. And, but but it, it wouldn't be, it would have to be advertised with a different, different wording. So you're not really coming back to the same one. So just postponing, I don't recommend that that would be the way to do it. So oh. I think you'd be better off coming back on, a sec on another first reading and do it that way. Or come back to a second reading. Okay, so if we wanted to come back for another first reading, what do we need to do? Can, can he rescind it? Well, that's what I'm, I'm, what do we need to do, assuming for a second that we, five of us wanted it to come back for another first reading, what you would we could, do? You could do a motion at this point and, and vote, vote it down. And then it will come back on your agenda for another first reading with a new version. Okay. Or they could voluntarily, I mean, would that be, yeah, I don't know, I guess it makes any difference. I think it would be cleaner probably to come back with another first reading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because now that is just, that's what I, don't I would know think. how many changes are going to be required. Okay. If you leave something small, you could come back on a second reading with that one, one minor change. I don't know what uh, Mr. LeBlanc and Mr. Stevenson are going to change. Okay. Is there a motion? Okay. On, you know, a word or two. I've taken a little liberty. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Chambers. I was just going to say, would it uh, help? We have a motion, or we have a, an item on the agenda. So move this forward and then defeat, the, vote no to this. Then vote it down. I'm going to say, I mean, that's it. You make a motion to approve. If you don't like it, you vote no. If you vote yes, then you're approved. Okay. Motions should generally be made in the affirmative. Okay. Okay. So this is like the double negative. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Including the person who makes the motion has to vote. Don't you have to vote for your own motion when you vote to? No, no, you oh. don't. Okay. I mean, if you, 
you want to make a motion just to bring it up for a vote, okay. you don't have to vote positively for your Okay. Vote. Okay. So okay. Council members, we need to move this item. Okay. Then uh, <laughs> I move to bring this item to a vote. That's, not, that's what happens uh, when you make a motion. There you <laughs> that's go. what you're doing. I, that's, that's not well, the motion. I move to approve. I'm trying first. not to go ahead. You move to approve it. Move to approve on the first reading. <laughs> motion. I'll, se have a second. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion of the motion? We all know what we're doing here. I, we're clear in your mind. I'm not telling you how to vote. You're clear in your mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor, signify with aye. All those opposed, nay. 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 Or nay. <laughs> we haven't had a motion like that in a long okay. time. Okay. <laughs> I. You know. This is clunky, but we're all on the same page here, guys. We know what we're doing, right? Okay. And, I think and we're we headed can in the right direction. We, we, we are absolutely heading in the right direction. That's fine. We got a couple of minor, this, this clunky procedurally, but we're not That's against good. you on this. No, we know no, what you're doing. And, and we're not, we're not, yeah. again, we're not trying to eliminate any Okay. Clarified a little bit. We'll, well clarify. Are you going to see no these papers? Because the second one I had to go in ahead of time. So we'll just ignore that. Okay. Okay. Sorry. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lunk. I know this is not, it's like a sign ordinance. It's not easy to, I get it. I yeah, I no, get we, it. We, we got it. I get it. Okay. Almost there. Council business. Any holdover council business from previous meetings? <coughs> I have one item, I think, probably on the council business, and I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot if you don't have a firm answer. That's an, I didn't give you any heads up. Do you have any idea, ballpark, when we might get something back from you on the Rescue Plan Act proposals, the capital projects versus uh, public works? I, we've we've been we've been talking about it. I've been gone. Troy is now gone. Um, we kind of need to put that schedule together for you. Um, I, I don't know that I can commit because I've got so much going on right now. I'm right in the middle of budget, but. Um, I'll get it to you soon. I, I don't know. I can't give you an answer. I would hate to commit and not be able to. Aren't we meeting on that money on the 29th of June? I'm sorry? Uh, is, isn't that the purpose of the June 29th meeting? To discuss? No. no. June 29th meeting is a budget meeting. Oh. Check that's, what, we'll go, again. that's our first actual budget meeting. That's a budget meeting. Because okay. we should be getting numbers here from property appraiser here very soon. We don't have a rescue plan meeting. Okay. No, we we don't have that scheduled. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. I, I think I think council was waiting on me to provide you with some priority list, so that we can start having discussion about yep. it. Okay. Thank you very much. New business and board reports. Any uh, new business, Mr. Chambers? Uh, yes, and it, uh, it was it was addressed earlier in comments about uh, speedy enforcement in Temple Terrace, and I just wanted to let you know. I know uh, it was a goal of uh, council to. Uh, work on that and I want to commend the police Friday I saw enforcement on Whiteway Drive uh, out there so I know they were out there uh, unfortunately giving tickets but they were out there and then yesterday I observed uh, units on Tumble Terrace Highway uh, before lunch uh, so thank you I know you're trying you can't be everywhere at one time but thank you for being out there chief and it is a goal of uh, this council to uh, work on our speeders that was it. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. I've, I've also seen a visible increase in traffic enforcement, so you notice that. Other new business, board reports. I have a couple things if you'll bear with me. Um, first of all, the city clerk and city attorney brought it to my attention the other day that uh, May 28th, 20, 1925, is the actual birthday of Temple Terrace. And I think Ms. Hayes put it out on Facebook, and I knew it was 1925, like most of us, but I can't say that I knew it was May 28th. So that was kind of a neat catch on somebody's part, and uh, thank you for bringing that to everybody's attention. The uh, next thing, and this is not on the agenda because we just received it. <clears throat> we received a letter from the Florida House of Representatives, uh, Representative Ben Diamond in House District 68, <clears throat> and the letter is regarding uh, Vice Mayor Donahue's efforts during the legislative session on home rule. And I'll just read it. It says, congratulations on your well-deserved recognition at the Suncoast League of Cities 2021 annual awards dinner as a Florida League of Cities homeroom hero. 
I appreciate all the work you do every day for the residents of the city of Temple Terrace. So do we. Uh, your, adv your advocacy is so appreciated. It was a privilege for Christina and I to be with you at the awards dinner and to see you recognized for your work. In Tallahassee, I've always tried to defend the principles of home rule and recognize the important work you do in local government. Thank you for your leadership and congratulations once again on your well-deserved recognition. Please do not hesitate to contact me if I can ever be of assistance and I look forward to working closely with you and the Suncoast League of Cities on your priorities in the future. Best personal regards, Ben Diamond. So well done. Thank you. Well done, Vice Mayor. Very good. And the thorn in their side. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that each of us um, does quite a bit, but you always are very diligent on the home rule issue, and, and uh, thank goodness for that. So I did, a, on a new business, I want to comment just briefly on some of the public comment. And I guess Ms. Tumbleson, unfortunately, I guess she had to leave, but I'm sure that she's either probably watching or she'll get word of this. If, if not, I'll talk to her. Um, <clears throat> there may be some transportation things that she's not aware of, but it's not true that there's nothing planned on any of these roads. That, that transportation stuff is complicated, and it's not always easy to figure out who's on first, but that's not true that there's no projects um, and I'm the city's representative on the transportation planning organization formerly MPO now TPO so I kind of am actively involved in these transportation projects and, and uh, talk to the county and the county commissioners and Florida Department of Transportation and I talk to these folks on a regular basis. Um, let me begin with the county roads, right? County roads include portions of 56th Street and Bullard Parkway slash Temple Terrace Highway. 56th Street is scheduled for a complete streets renovation from I-4 all the way to Fletcher Avenue in the upcoming years. So that will go all the way through our city. But, you know, that's, a, that's our main drag and that's slated for total renovation rehabilitation I'm not sure what the right word is for that but um, there's also a complete streets project scheduled underway for Bullard Parkway slash Temple Terrace Highway all the way from 56th Street East to look at median improvements laneage speed limits multimodal options um, and probably the biggest one of all is the Fowler Avenue corridor which is slated for rebuilding from I-275 to I-75. Now, many of these projects involve different phases. They're not all going to happen simultaneously. But over the next few years, almost all of the county, state, and state roads that run through Temple Terrace are due for rehabilitation. And so I just, I'm not telling anybody who, who to talk to or what to say, but there's nothing to lean on the county commission for the county has been very good to us on these projects, so has FDOT. And they've been very receptive, and I'm, and I'm actively involved in trying to move these projects further to accelerate them as much as we can. But I don't want anybody in the public to have the impression that these other entities are not working with us because, you know, they are. And, and so, um, and maybe um, I'm sure Mrs. Ms. Tumbleson's probably just not you know, this stuff's not easy to find. It's not, it's uh, sometimes it's buried on page 82 of a long report or something. So um, anyway, and if anybody has questions, anybody in the community has any questions about these, I'm happy to explain the best I can um, and tell you what I know. So I'm happy to answer questions. <sighs> City manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A couple things here. Uh, I, I want to Thank Council for noticing the traffic enforcement. I've, I've noticed it as well. Um, that's a difficult job. You, know, you get pretty spread thin, but I know that they've been uh, actively pursuing speeding, and I see it every day when I come in so, and every day when I leave. So I know that they have stepped it up, and I do appreciate their work. Um, I was given notice a week before last, uh, just after our last meeting, um, the appropriation request that we had in with the uh, with the state for our EOC uh, never made it to the budget um, I'm still trying to figure out why um, because I was uh, given the indication that it was going to be there and there was money available I think the uh, 
the governor's even said, we have plenty of money. So um, I've been assured that it will uh, go on the next session, which is in, in another eight months, but we'll still continue to pursue that. But for right now, I'm trying to figure out why it didn't make it. Um, um, and from uh, what uh, Mr. Betts has told me, uh, the paperwork just didn't make it where it needed to be. So hmm. that's all I know about that. Um, and the other thing is, just to remind council, I will be out in at a conference for the rest of the week. Uh, in my absence, uh, uh, Chief Albano will be acting city manager. So that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Stevenson, do you, is there any, have you heard from Mr. Pauly or from Patrick Berman, is there any movement on the parcel A, any interest now that the apartments are going up and <clears throat> is there anything going on there with, I mean, is it nothing or nothing that's worked its way to us or? Um, which parcel? You, you the, the remaining parcel in parcel A, the one just south of the Paragon project. It has a letter. It's not A. The uh, the it's the uh, one point something acre. Yeah. 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 Uh, the no. Only, the only part of A that's left, I think. Yeah. It's yeah. The only part of A. Yeah. No. Nothing. Wait a minute. No. <laughs> We do, we do have, I, I will let you know this, we're trying to work with um, a, a local guy that runs a barbecue mm -hmm. business um, that is getting very big. He's trying to feel out the market. So we've kind of signed a three month lease with him, just a month to month. Um, he wants to put a one of his food trucks on there to test the market. And um, if he can get the results that he's hoping for, um, He's looking to buy the piece of property, so it's on a temporary basis. But we thought we'd let a kind of let him feel the market out there, see if he's got a a market for barbecue. And got a good business going on, mm -hmm. and he's now in Lutz. We're trying to get him out of Lutz and get him down to Temple Terrace. Yeah. So. And he's a Temple Terrace guy, right? Yes, ma'am. Temple Terrace citizen. I'm sorry. He is a Temple Terrace citizen. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. So that's. That's already approved. Is that coming? Um, we have signed a lease with him, and it's just it's fifteen hundred bucks a month. I mean, it's not that uh, not that big of a deal. We can, again, it's a month to month lease that uh, we've worked out with him. So. It's a nice way to do it. Huh? It's a nice way to do it. Well, we thought you know uh, the property is not being, and we don't have any activity on the property now. The property is not off the market by any means. I mean, we can get out of this uh, this lease agreement uh, just with a written notice. So. Um, but he has shown a lot of interest in it and um, taken up the whole 1.7 acres. I think um, he would probably be able to develop it. He's got some, uh, he's got some pretty heavy hitters financing him. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Steve. Anything else? No, no, sir. That's it. City Attorney? Uh, the only thing I wanted to mention is that uh, I was appointed by the Florida League of Cities to the 2021-2022 Land Use and Economic Development Committee. I haven't attended any meetings yet, so don't ask me what exactly they're doing, but it says that my responsibility will be to work with the other committee members to discuss the many issues facing our cities that will come before the legislature during the 2022 session and decide upon a policy direction for the Florida League of Cities legislative efforts. So just want to let you know. It looks like they've got four meetings scheduled between uh, June 11th and the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Very good. Congratulations, I think. <laughs> well, and on that note, I've been reappointed to the uh, Municipal Administration Policy Committee as well. So, yeah, so we'll be driving to Orlando. <laughs> good. Anything else, Mr. Sean? That's it. That's it. Are there, are there other? Oh, wait, I do. Sorry. One. Um, a Scrivener's error. Uh, in the resolution uh, that I believe you heard last uh, council meeting that had to do with the interlocal agreement for library services between the city of Temple Terrace, Plant City, and Hillsborough County, there was one uh, wrong word in the title. It uh, referred to a a uh, five-year interlocal agreement when in actuality it's a three-year 
interlocal agreement. The body of the resolution was correct and did talk about three years, and the interlocal agreement that was attached to it also had the correct number as three years. <clears throat> How did that get caught? I don't know who caught it. <laughs> We were wondering why none of you caught it. <laughs> so oh, now I we're on guard to be don't better know. proofreaders. Mike, Mike. That is also about, about 10 individuals. Because yeah. my question is, and I'm not trying to be facetious <laughs> here, we all make mistakes, but my question is if we can identify how this was caught, can we do that, whatever that is, before we approve it? You know, there's got because this is the second meeting in a row where we've had Scrivener here. The last one was a bunch of them in the same document. So now, again, I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm just saying if we can identify somebody's catch, if it's the same person, give them the whoever that is before we approve them. Because <laughs> um, question then, this this ordinance uses five years, and the one we're looking at right now in the third paragraph it says in 2016 we entered into a five year so I can see why we would have read the first one to say five years because the very next time it says that in the past we entered a five year yeah I see what you're saying so so yeah I, I mean I'm not I see what you're saying I'm not correct you know I'm not uh, no, defending myself I'm just saying that this this one why is it only three now that I'm asking it was five, and now it's three. <laughs> and originally, it was proposed as being open-ended, and, and I was contacted by Plant City's city attorney who says, I don't like to leave anything open-ended. So it came back, and I don't know how we, then I think it was five, and then I don't know how we went to three. It went to three. Carl, <laughs> please. That way the public can see and hear yeah. you, too. Years ago, the initial contract between the county and Plant City and Temple Terrace was renewed annually. It was done every year. The group got together and said, this is ridiculous that we're doing this every year. Let's just do it every five years. Mm -hmm. And it was that way for, I don't know, one or two terms. James, you may remember better than I do. At which point, the county came up with this grand idea, let's just leave it open-ended. And so it got passed around to the city attorneys, and like the city <coughs> attorney said, Plant City had an issue with the open-ended contract and didn't want to do that anymore. So somewhere between the attorneys involved and possibly the county administrators, they came up with three years. So instead of being every five years, instead of every one year, now it's every three years. So, it, it, you know. Um, how it ended up at three instead of going back to five happened somewhere, I believe, in the county system. Yeah, okay. so. so we're lucky this is the only mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Mr. Langfield. Exactly. We good? <laughs> All right. Any other business to come before the council tonight? Staff, council members, public, anybody? If not, we are adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.